In this video, we're going to be taking a look at velocity versus time graphs. These are all graphs that show how fast is something is going at a specific time. And we have seven different combinations we're going to analyze. First question we're going to answer is, is the graph flat or is it slanted? If it's flat and it remains at the same value on the y-axis, that means the velocity remains the same as the time is elapsing. So that means it's moving at a constant velocity. Now, if the graph is slanted at all, that means that the value on the y-axis is changing, which is the velocity, which means that the object is then accelerating. Now, let's go ahead and focus on the constant velocity graphs first. So if it's flat, as one of these three graphs show, then it's basically telling you that it's maintaining the same velocity. All you really need to look at is its position in relation to the x-axis. If it's right on zero, then it's at rest. That's the only specific position it can be at in order to show you a velocity of zero, because a lot of times people might get used to the flat position versus time graph as something at rest, and that one can move vertically along the graph and show that something is at rest, but this one can't. It has to be right on zero. Now, anything above the x-axis is going to show a positive velocity. And if it's farther from the x-axis, then that would mean that it's going faster. And for the negative direction, it's all pretty similar. Anything underneath the x-axis is in the negative direction, but as something gets faster, it's actually getting lower on the graph because it's getting increasingly more negative. So the rule of thumb is if it's farther away from zero, it's going to be a greater value. The negative is just simply showing you which direction it's going. It doesn't necessarily mean that's going faster or slower. All right, that pretty much covers everything for the constant velocity graphs. So let's take a look at our slanted graphs, which is showing us some accelerated motion. And we have two types of motion that we're going to break down. One is speeding up. And the other one is slowing down. Now, I would say the natural mistake that a lot of people might make is that if they see a positive slope, that's going to think make them think that something is speeding up. And if they see a negative slope, that's going to make people think that something is slowing down. But they follow a different rule. So if you take a look at both of our graphs that are speeding up, this one is speeding up in the positive direction because it's above the x-axis. So remember, anything above the x-axis is going in the positive direction and anything below the x-axis is going in the negative direction. Now, if you notice a similarity between the two, they're both slanting away from zero. So that's the rule that you want to follow is if it's moving away from zero. That means that the number is getting progressively larger in the positive or negative direction. And then for slowing down anything that's moving towards zero. So you want to be very cautious about quickly taking a look at a slope that's positive and considering it to be speeding up because in some cases it is and some cases it isn't. So you want to make sure that any graph that is slanted away from zero is something that's speeding up and anything slanting towards zero is going to be slowing down. So that pretty much covers it for the velocity versus time graphs. All you really need to do is take a look at whether the line is flat or slanted how it's slanted if it's moving away or towards zero, and then you'll be able to figure out all the different details relating to the object for a velocity versus time graph. Thank you for watching and listening.